T.J. Bramer here in studio with Jefferson County Sheriff John Wallace and Hanover Town Marshal Josh Taylor. Uh, Sheriff, Chief, thank you guys so much for coming on the program. It's always our pleasure, A.J. Thanks for having us. Thank you for having us and those out in Radio Land tuning in to hear us today. Definitely appreciate you guys coming by. An opportunity to talk to you guys with what's going on in the departments. So as we as we dive in, um, what's sheriff? Uh, what's new at the sheriff's department? Well, our continued issues of uh, overcrowding at the at the jail. Uh, we're looking into addressing those matters, uh, you know, essentially as we speak. Uh, the county council has uh, stepped up, which we very much appreciate, and um, and is allotting us some uh, additional jail officers. Our latest uh, jail inspection uh, by the state jail inspector noted that uh, obviously we were overcrowded and and, and understaffed. Uh, the understaffing issue is something that we can deal with immediately, and and uh, again, thanks to the county council for doing so. Uh, we'll be adding a, a couple new jail officers in October, uh, two more in January, and then hopefully two more in March to bring us up to a total of six additional jail officers, which will certainly make a significant difference in, in the county jail. Now, the overpopulation is a, is a different problem. You know, we can't uh, add on where we're in our current facility. There's no uh, other room to remodel to, uh, you know, make additional space. So so now we, we formed a panel uh, with some uh, county commissioners and uh, some jail staff and myself, and uh, and we're going to look into this matter to see what we can do to, to correct it and um, whether it be, you know, staying where we're at and, and doing the best we can there or expanding um, you know elsewhere and, and uh, I think eventually that's something we're gonna have to do I believe you know 11 years ago when they expanded the county jail they firmly believed that it would uh, that it would last the next you know 30 or 40 years but um, they didn't uh, foresee and none of us did uh, the uh, drug epidemic that hit the community and that certainly has taken a taken a toll on our population so so we're looking um, you know the, the main thing is that we we get this done right and uh, you know the time has come to where we need to do it if we can't uh, can't continue to put it off and, and and hope for the best because that's certainly not a solution and not what we're elected to do so we'll uh, we'll look elsewhere we got a couple other options and uh, and we'll see where that leads us um, you know i'm uh, looking up the state hospital there may be some facilities up there available for us that uh, that may may fit our needs so i've reached out to the state and 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 asked them to uh, take that into consideration and uh, and they've been very uh, uh, good about getting back with me and and, and and let me know what their circumstances are and, and the possibilities of that happening. So we're looking there and, and we owe some property out at the uh, uh, old JPG so we'll look at that as well but uh, the bottom line is that we, we get it done right. I think that you know we talk about the overcrowding issue and then also the understaffing it becomes not, not only a safety issue for the inmates but also this tight a tight space with a lot of people in it that's also just as dangerous yeah. for the folks at the jail yeah absolutely and that was one of the uh, things we we're dinged on as well and that all goes back to over overcrowding is uh, there has to be so many areas of uh, space available for the uh, for the inmates or so many uh, feet of space for the inmates i should say and um, you know if that's not the case and that's another issue and again that goes back to overcrowding but it does uh, lead to other problems uh, you know when you're in tight quarters and uh, you're in a stressful situation both the inmates and the uh, <clears throat> and the correctional officers at times it uh, it can make for a dangerous situation so so again we're looking into it uh, my hats off to our commissioners and and to our council for for you know taking this serious as we expect them to and uh, and addressing it and, and we're going to move forward but we don't want to rush it either we want to make sure that like i said we get it done right um turning things over to the town of hanover uh, chief taylor what's new on you guys end not much different than the last time we talked I mean fortunately we're not having the issues that the sheriff and the sheriff's department and the county's having to deal with I mean uh, out in our land we're just having simple uh, property theft reports some individuals leaving items unattended uh, theft is a crime of opportunity uh, if you leave it out and you don't protect it somebody may walk past and just pick it up and figure it's abandoned property issues that way but unfortunately we're on the lower end of the spectrum of issues and problems at the given moment. I know that since uh, the last time we talked to you, in between the last time and this time, um, <laughs> turned into a little more positive of an experience. Um, last time we saw you, you talked about Celebrate Hanover. So that's an event you guys yes. got to yes, participate we, in. We had um, Labor Day weekend, we had Celebrate Hanover and uh, at Hanover College. They hosted it, uh, opened it up to the public, and also the Southwestern School Corporation all went together. Uh, we had several individuals coming out the police department we were able to meet and greet with individuals that uh, we typically see in different venues whether we're at their house on accident scenes but we were able to see them there uh, the school system provided food and Hanover College staff was able to cook it and provide it to the public 
for everybody and they had the free game. It was a very positive and fun, enjoyable afternoon for my guys in my department. I think that's something we talk about quite a lot. I know, Sheriff, this is something you've talked about before, too, just you know, those opportunities for the officers, for all of our law enforcement entities here in the area to get out and for people to see them in a... Uh, a less stressful light than you yeah, might that's, be used to seeing them in. Well, absolutely, and that's uh, that's very important that we uh, that we get out and meet the public uh, on their terms and uh, and to get to know them because uh, you know once we can sit down and, and talk and and uh, you know communicate, uh, the better off we're going to be in the long run. It's good to build those relationships. You know, we're no, never know where those are going to lead you to, and uh, quite often uh, in those type of settings, they'll lead to a uh, to a positive outcome. So. Uh, uh, Chief does a very good job out in Hanover. So as as his officers getting out and, and meeting the community, and uh, and uh, I think it's going to it'll definitely pay off in the future. Uh, putting a plug in, I guess, for Madison today. Uh, this coming weekend, they have Chautauqua, so there's yes. going to be a lot of individuals coming from outside of the community here to visit the tourism industry. Uh, but this is a time for uh, Jefferson County to share its neighborly love uh, and welcome people here and have a good, positive experience also. So. Yeah, absolutely. It's a, it's a great event, and it uh, looks like... Uh, the weather's going to be perfect for it, uh, for a change. It's not going to be too hot or cold. It's going to be just right. So uh, no excuse not to get out. Um, and also support our local civic groups because this is a weekend in which, uh, uh, like the number one fire company, um, they get out and have their fish fry. So get out and support those folks and, and all of our civic organizations uh, that have their booths uh, set up as well. They do so much good for our community. It's uh, it's unbelievable. So uh, it's a good opportunity to show uh, our support for them. As well. Now, Sheriff, we were just talking during the break. Um, obviously, our other partner for this program, Program. Madison Police Chief Jeremy Perkins, uh, a little busy this morning working on uh, some stuff, or following up on some stuff that you guys were working on yesterday. Yeah, I believe he is. Uh, yeah, I spoke to him earlier. Uh, he was working on getting out a uh, news release information with regards to a, a strong arm robbery that uh, that the city police investigated uh, yesterday morning at the uh, CVS on Clifty Drive. <clears throat> they did a great job with it. They were able to follow up on it and uh, and execute an arrest or a search warrant and ultimately an arrest on the on the individual involved. Um, he was found at a local motel uh, not too far from the uh, from the crime scene. So um, good job to those guys. Um, he'll have additional information on the name and, and other details of it coming out uh, soon. But uh, but it uh, was a was a strong arm robbery, which essentially means it was taken by taken by force. Uh, I know there was uh, cash and other goods taken, and, and I'll let the chief elaborate more on that. But uh, but uh, it was a good job by those guys to follow up and uh, and, and make an arrest. Those uh, can be very uh, dangerous situations, and, and obviously very unnerving for the employees of uh, of that store and for the community as a whole. Anytime you use uh, you know force upon somebody, it's a uh, it's a dangerous situation. So good job to the PD. Yeah. And it was also a situation where we talk about all the time seeing the different entities work together. I know. Um, you had some of your guys down on the scene. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, it's it's always a team effort. Um, you know, regardless whether it happens at Hanover or out in the county or, or in the city, uh, we're always there to work with each other, and, uh, and and I believe we work to work well together as one. So, and that's what the community expects and and, and deserves. And uh, you know, that's that's the way we train. Often when we do train, we don't just train as one department. We'll train as uh, as different departments. So, uh, you know, a situation should arise. Uh, you know, we never know who's going to show up. Right? You got uh, you got to go with who you have. So, uh, we train as one and uh, and and it pays off it really does and makes it seamless uh, transition because one day you may be working with your normal shift partner but with Hanover our, our officers are on a different rotation than Madison and County so by having everybody work together at various trainings throughout the year we're able to know each other by face and name and interact so we know what our strong sets are and our weaknesses are and we can uh, adapt and overcome without any issues definitely like to see everybody coming together on that another thing uh, that yeah we were talking about during the break and obviously this is something i feel like we bring it up pretty frequently on this show but there's always a new one around the corner uh talk about scams and just uh, different people trying to take advantage of other yeah people. it's a it's a constant problem and, and i quite often get calls uh, you know several times a week uh, with regards to uh, to phone scams generally and uh, and i know we bring it up i know we talk about it but i just can't uh, reiterated enough to uh, to not give that information out on the phone no legitimate company is going to ask you for your uh, 
your credit card number or your you know your social security number or any personal information uh, that's going to be done in a different manner so when you do get that call the one of the latest ones is from uh, the people calling representing uh, which they're not but they're say they're representing in duke energy either pay x amount of dollars right now or we're going to shut your power off or or whatever it may be i mean it's just it's just on and on um, irs we get those quite often as well please don't give that information out Unfortunately, it does happen on occasions. Uh, unfortunately, you know we've taken reports on individuals that uh, that have lost their life savings, believe it or not, in, in these matters, and it's it's extremely sad when that, when that happens. Uh, uh, like I said, when that money goes, it's gone. It's it's generally gone out of the country, and uh, it's uh, almost impossible to do anything with. So, uh, hang up on them. Don't give them the time of day. Uh, you know, if you don't know the number, you can ignore it. Whatever it may be, but. Uh, but any kind of scam such as that, uh, you know, just uh, hang up, give me a call, give the chief a call, and uh, and we'll confirm that uh, that you did the right thing and, and it was a scam. Uh, but, uh, again, please, whatever you do, don't give out any kind of personal information over the phone because uh, generally it's going to be uh, it's going to be illegit. Uh, with the scams also, besides the uh, phone or online email type, a lot of times there'll be door-to-door -door activity, whether they're saying they're selling books or carpet cleaners or different things. In the town of Hanover, they have to have a special uh, permit to sell that where they're registered. I believe Madison has a similar permit where they have to register at town hall or city hall. But if you notice somebody in your neighborhood or going door-to-door -door at an odd time, if you see something, please call into dispatch or into one of the town halls and let us know of the strange activity or the unusual activity because those individuals may be authorized to be there or they may be up to no good. I know the sheriff, I, Chief Perkins, we would rather have our officers investigate a uh, false allegation of somebody breaking in or acting suspicious to find out they're legitimately there instead of having it not reported and have a crime be committed where we have to be reactive instead of proactive another thing going on right now you know we do have a lot of people that are contributing support to the relief efforts down in Texas and Florida in the wake of Hurricane Harvey and Hurricane Irma um, that's it always is a time when you see people are you know using their generosity to help others in need there's people out there trying to take advantage of that too yeah absolutely that's <clears throat> it's a very good point uh, there are and uh, just make sure that the organization you're you're giving to or the or the location you're sending your money to is is legitimate um, obviously the red cross uh, puts their information uh, on tv quite often so uh, so you if you get that information you know say from the media such as that then you know it's legit but uh, yeah very good point you got to be cautious because there's always those uh, those uh, low-life individuals that uh, that are willing to take advantage of such a tragic situation. So and we don't want to uh, we don't want to help them out at all. That's for sure. I think that another um, instance, you know, kind of talking about this, you know, when we ask people to you know contact law enforcement regarding a scam, just in general, uh, we, this is something we talk about all the time on here. You know how just uh, calling police for other issues is is the right move just you know yeah you talk all the time how they're you guys' ears absolutely and you and know i know we can think over the last several months how we've resolved uh, some uh, crimes and progress and burglaries and uh, and thefts and, and <clears throat> i'm sure hanover has as well with just that simple call of uh, suspicious activity if it doesn't look right you know your neighborhood uh, you know your surroundings better than anybody else if it doesn't look right or doesn't feel right then it's possibly not so give us a call that's all we need uh, to usually solve an issue so please don't ever hesitate to, to call that in um, you know quite often people say well I don't want to bother you or whatever it may be and uh, although we appreciate their concern for us that's our job uh, you know bother us let us know what's going on so we can get out there and check that out because indeed that may be the call we need to resolve it exactly uh somebody calling in and making a note or letting the authorities know about it might give us that puzzle piece to solve numerous crimes or prevent numerous things from happening. A shout out to Madison Police Chief Jeremy Perkins who we'll see him again next month but obviously duty calls. Yeah sometimes that happens. Uh, I'm sure he's uh, tuned in listening to us so we uh, we do miss him but uh, he'll be back next month. Certainly and uh as we wrap up the program, uh, Sheriff Wallace, you want to talk a little bit about, you know, we talked about the overcrowding issue, so obviously with that and then other, just other positions, I know you guys have a couple of positions you're hiring for. 
Yeah, absolutely. For the uh, for the jail staff, um, if you're interested in being a uh, jail officer, uh, please come down by and pick up an application at the uh, Jefferson County Sheriff's Department anytime between eight and four. And we take those throughout the year. Uh, we keep a uh, we keep a running uh, application process going. So, if uh, law enforcement and, and the jail is uh, something you think you'd be interested in, uh, please come down, fill out an application, and uh, we'll get you in for an interview. Uh, like I said, currently we're hiring uh, two more right now. We'll be hiring a couple more later in the year, and then uh, after the first year, we'll be hiring uh, several more additional jail officers. So, again, if it's something you're interested in, please come down and fill out that application. If you think you're interested in law enforcement in general, uh, the jail is a great place to start. It uh, kind of gives you some idea of the uh, clientele, so to speak, you'll you'll be dealing with, and um, it allows the officers uh, from Hanover and Madison and, and, of course, ours to get to know you as well, which is a big plus. So if that's something you think you're interested in, and this is a uh, jail staff's a good starting point. For those that may be interested in either jail staff or the uh, road officer positions, uh, getting your application in to just go through one of the application processes just to get your feet wet, if you're not sure or wanting to commit totally for that, it, it, it's sort of like you have to go to practice to try it. You're not going to be perfect the first time. So by applying in several processes or just going through it to get the experience to see if it is something you're interested in, it's worth taking the chance just just to submit your resume and your application, even if you're not 100% uh, committed or sure you want to do it, uh, you don't want to wait until Friday at 7 p.m. and regret you didn't turn in your application to Madison Police Department or uh, submit an application for the jail, uh, for the jailer position there. I mean, it's one of those you don't want to think about regretting it and saying, man, I should have done it. This is the time and the experience for you because Madison may maintain this list for several weeks weeks, several years, uh, or they may exhaust it and hire new individuals off of it. So it's very important that if you have an opportunity, do it and just not wait. Yeah, it's certainly a long process uh, from the time we hire you to the time you're street ready. It's, uh, it's over a year. So uh, we have a lot invested in you, and you have a lot invested in us. So um, it's, uh, like I said, something that uh, it does take some time to, to get up and running. But uh, but uh, it's been, like I said, it's, I can't imagine I'm doing anything else in, in my life. It's been very rewarding. And uh, each day when you go in and you look forward to going to work, and I still do that, then you know you're in the right career. So uh, if, uh, you know, if you have that desire, uh, give us a shot. Obviously joining a, a fantastic team of individuals, either the Sheriff's Department or the Madison Police. Absolutely. And these guys out in Hanover, too. Without a doubt. <laughs> Currently, we're not hiring uh, <laughs> right. any full-time right. positions. Yeah, so exactly. right now, we're at our uh, stability point and everything. But again, that could go and change. Uh, just like what I teased uh, former Chief Thurston and the sheriff, uh, when we brought in Officer Salters, we were like, no poaching, guys. This guy's mine. Uh, no need to hire away from each agency. <laughs> yeah, they have a good one in Officer Salters. <laughs> I've got one eye out. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> He's got yeah. both eyes. Yeah. I'm not kidding. <laughs> yeah. It's good for the town of Hanover. He's a, he's a fine young man. As we come up on the end of the program, uh, Chief Taylor, is there anything else you'd like to add? I'd just like to go and say thank you guys for tuning in. Everybody be safe. Uh, be cautious and careful driving. Pay attention to the speed limit. and uh, Just be aware of your surroundings. Uh, just right now with all the technology we have, everybody's in their own little bubble waiting on their phone call, text message, Facebook, uh, Instagram, Instagram posting. And they're just not paying attention to what's going around uh, them, whether it's home, in public, driving the car. Just know what's going on around you. Sure, well. Yeah, and my condolences go out to uh, former Mayor Mark Lytle, uh, his family, who Mark uh, Mayor Lytle passed away here several days ago. He gave a lot to the community. His family's given a lot to the community. Uh, he was also a, a state representative. Uh, Although I'm on the uh, different side of the uh, of the aisle as far as the uh, party tickets go, uh, uh, Mayor Lytle hired me uh, as a young police officer years and years ago, and uh, gave me the opportunity of a lifetime. So, uh, so my condolences go out to uh, to his family. And certainly, thinking about the Lytle family, um, Mayor Lytle was definitely definitely a good guy. He will be missed. He certainly will. Once again, talking with uh, Jefferson County Sheriff John Wallace and Hanover Town Marshal Josh Taylor here on Cop Talk. Gentlemen, thank you so much for coming on the program. Thank you so much, AJ. We enjoyed thank you it. for having us. And we'll see you guys again next month. All right.